do the temple people explain the, the, the um, strange bits of Zechariah which imply that the building of the second temple involved levelling a new site? You mean how do the... I mean, as far as I can see, the Zechariah prophecies about um, you know the mountain becoming a plain and, and building all the rest of it, they are implying that a new mountaintop site is to be used for the rebuilt temple. That suggests to me that the site of the first temple was not the site of the second temple. Hmm. Now, if you look in the great protest prophecies in you know what we call the third Isaiah, the anointed one, you know the tradition that the anointed one will rebuild the true temple. And right at the beginning of third Isaiah, you have the spirit of the Lord is upon me, etc., etc., to rebuild the ancient ruins. Now, the second temple is already up, and somebody called the Anointed One says, I'm going to rebuild the ancient ruins. I suspect the first temple was not on the same time hmm. as the second temple. Now, I realize that might be putting the cat amongst the pigeons a bit, but what evidence is there that Solomon's temple was actually south-east of the present Temple Mount? Yeah, um, I mean, the old from, from what I've looked at, um, I, I don't think there's any archaeological evidence one way or the other at all. You see, why, I'll tell you why this fascinated me. Um, I'm intrigued by the buildings of Justinian. She's just, I mean, got nothing to do with the Old Testament. I'm just intrigued by the buildings of Justinian. So I get to see some of these Justinian buildings uh -huh. when I travel with him. And I'm obviously very interested in them. And the one that fascinates me most of all is the Nea Church in Jerusalem. Now, very little is known about that, but, um, and I have never visited that site. I'm actually going next February. Oh. But um, I've I haven't been to Jerusalem since I had this interest, so I'm hoping to see it. But um, if you look at the very little that is known about the Nea, it corresponds exactly to Ezekiel's plan for the restored temple. Um, it has two pillars, Jacob and Boaz. It has, we know all sorts of things about it. If you read Procopius, he's a bit kind of um, prosaic and all the rest of it, but you can get a little bit. There's bits, apparently, in the Save Zerubbabel about it. Um, that there was a, a statue of a beautiful woman in all the rest of it. And if you put all this together, together with the archaeological um, evidence, Justinian is building the temple, the eschatological temple, in exactly the place that the temple should have been, but on the wrong hill. And this is because the name Mount Zion shifted from the eastern hill to the western hill. Justinian didn't know that, and so he put up on his Mount Zion exactly the temple that he thought should mm -hmm. be rebuilt. Well, it should have been, of course, on the other one, with the, the built-up end and all the rest of it. It should have been near the Gion Spring, because Justinian's temple, the Nea, underneath the bit where he's got built up over the valley, you know, the, the east end where the priests were on their rights, whatever Procopius says, he's got an elaborate water system with plumbing to imitate the Gion. Yeah. Yeah. Now, presumably, in Justinian's time, they were, you know, his researchers said, oh yes, the temple is in such and such a place on Mount Zion. Presumably, in the days when Mount Zion was the other hill. Yeah. That's where Solomon's temple was. Now, if you look at, um, if you look at the Enoch books, when Enoch goes on one of his heavenly journeys, he kind of flies, he looks down, he sees all the things. He sees the temple built over the Gihon. That's not the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. So I'm intrigued by the case that you can make for Solomon's Temple, the one that they want restored, having been on the kind of what, especially the southeastern spur. So this is the modern Siloan area, that ridge that goes goes to the south oh, of. That's what you're talking about. The, 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 I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, I can't envisage the map of Jerusalem. Um, if you've got the the Temple Mount there, yeah. and you've got the Western Hill there with the Church of the Anastasis, you've got this other little yeah. bit that goes down to the southeast. That's the one. And, and it's the ridge that ends up yeah. at the Salon Pool. Yes, at the yeah, bottom. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm sure that Solomon's Temple is there. Hmm. So n now, in fact, they're they're doing some excavations there now. Uh, uh, I talked to. Um, an archaeologist 
who, um, who, who had talked to the archaeologist who was yeah. digging, and they're finding lots of interesting things that they think uh -huh. might be Davidic. I mean, you know, it's it, they're yeah. just starting. And but, I mean, um, that, that, that sort of sloping wall of masonry they call the miller. Yeah. I think that's all part of it. And then, so you're saying that when they rebuilt the second temple by the Zerubbabel, they moved it up to... The, they moved the, it somewhere. I'm sure they did, because that's the time at which they start saying it was built on Mount Moriah, where Isaac was sacrificed. Yeah. And, and you think Herod's temple is accurately located on I don't the current know, Temple I, Mount Plaza? I don't know about that either, because, I mean, there are people who think that that was southeast of the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount wasn't a temple at all. Um, but I... The, the, an association of the temple with the spring, which doesn't mm -hmm. move. That's the thing that keeps coming back to me. And the, that, you know, Enoch vision of, you know, he's flying, he sees the temple, and he sees the gushing stream, yeah. and he's another stream flowing to the sun. No, you, you've got the apocalyptic uh, yeah. visions of, of a river flowing out of the base of the temple, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, this is. Yeah, um, and this is what Justinian was trying to replicate. Because he's got this great plaster system, system, great plaster system, and there's the, the plaque there which tells yeah. you, you know, this was put up at such and such a time, mm -hmm. so we know exactly what it is. And um, I mean, it was built with this special red stone. I mean, it was exactly the temple of, you know, it was exactly what just it, what Ezekiel's temple was going to be. It's exactly the right size, you know, the the, the, the double square, um, it's got the two pillars in front of it, and the huge cedar roof, everything. That was the new temple. Of hmm. course, during the, the Parthian War, it was torn down. You know, the Jews obviously yeah. it was torn down, and, and I mean, what's remains of it was, was um, incorporated into the Muslim palaces and so forth. And there's just a tiny bit left. But what is fascinating about that is that it coincides with the time when Justinian's general recaptured the temple treasure from Carthage. Right. And, I mean, Justinian was very superstitious, and there was that Jewish seer in Constantinople who said to him, oh, a few people <laughs> here, you know, Rome <laughs> fell, Carthage fell, and he gets rid of them very fast, and according to Procopius, he sends them to the temples, plural, of the Christians in Jerusalem. Yeah. Now, is it possible that the Nayar was built to house the temple treasure? Mm -hmm. Because um, in Orthodox tradition, so, the seven branch candlestick is one of the great symbols of Mary, right? Mm -hmm. That church is dedicated to Mary. If the candlestick returned at that time, that would account for the date of the consecration of the Nea being remembered in the Orthodox Church still as the day when Mary entered the temple. Oh, the 21st really? of November, the feast when Mary goes to the temple, and it's the day after the date when that church was dedicated. Hmm. Now, I mean, that you can trace that through literally to the time when the church was still standing. What's going on? Yeah.